So for those that may be losing interest or think that things are all settled down out in North Carolina, Western Tennessee, and all the other affected areas, not just Asheville, but Asheville got decimated. Asheville got absolutely wiped off the map completely. And people are forgetting about this and the mainstream isn't even talking about it. So channels like mine and any other that actually cares about the country that we live in should be posting this nonstop because all the mainstream is doing is saying things like this. Now, bear in mind, everything they're going to say in the next two minutes, they have absolutely zero proof of, and yet they're still putting it out on the news. And yet we've got people on the ground, people of all walks of life that are literally filming from the disaster area, showing things like Black Hawk helicopters literally rotor washing all the donations away. And people are like, oh, that's not true. That's not accurate. Really? Because the Connecticut National Guard is the one that called this out. They said that is a North Carolina National Guard helicopter with its transponder off that came over, purposefully sat and hovered over the general donation area and completely smoked these people. Do you know what rotor wash is? Well, it sucks. But according to the mainstream media, FEMA is the victim now. This morning, growing safety fears for government workers in western North Carolina, supporting ongoing recovery efforts from Hurricane Helene. According to the Washington Post, an urgent message was sent to numerous federal agencies on Saturday, warning FEMA has advised all federal responders in Rutherford County, North Carolina, to stand down and evacuate the county immediately, adding that National Guard troops had come across trucks of armed militia, saying they were out hunting FEMA. NBC News has not seen the email cited by the Post, and it's unclear whether the threat mentioned was seen as credible. North Carolina Republican Congressman Chuck Edwards addressing the reported threats on MSNBC. We had two counties with uh, folks reported uh, with uh, different militia groups attacking and a threat and threatening FEMA. In a statement to NBC News, FEMA writing in part, for the safety of our dedicated staff and disaster survivors we are helping, FEMA has made some operational adjustments. According to the agency, disaster recovery centers remained open. But at least two counties said FEMA staff would not appear at other planned locations Sunday, with officials in Ashe County saying the agency had paused their process as a precaution as they are assessing the threats. That included a temporary halt on accepting some aid applications. The heightened tension with FEMA's response to Helene has been fueled in recent days by misinformation, amplified in part by former President Trump. Kamala spent all her FEMA money, billions of dollars, on housing for illegal migrants. The head of FEMA calling those claims categorically false and promising that the agency's work will not stop. It doesn't deter us. We know what our mission is. Asheville business owners like William Disson say it's a distraction and that more help is needed. I want folks to know that the government is here. They're helping. Um, I know we'd all like it to be a little faster, but also realizing that the devastation is just so vast and so immense that, you know, it's going to take time. So what you just heard is an absolute lie. Everybody on the ground that could somehow get themselves a cell phone signal or managed to get to a location where they could get a cell phone signal, has been putting out real-time, as-it-happened information. And every time, FEMA has been nowhere to be found. Glenn Beck went down there with a congressman, and they found a FEMA truck that was literally, like, hiding, hiding for the day. You can Google that yourself. But here's the deal. These guys are lying to you, and all we're hearing through this entire presidential campaign is the word misinformation. Anything that makes them look bad, misinformation, misinformation, and yet they're running a story like this right now with not one single solitary shred of proof other than FEMA claiming, FEMA making claims. There's no video. There's no nothing. How is that possible? These people live in an area that has literally been washed off the face of the map, and some people are still finding a way to garner a cell phone signal, but yet with with FEMA coming out saying American citizens are actively posseing up and hunting them down, it's amazing. You'd have a better, you'd have a, a literal better chance of hunting down Bigfoot 
in North Carolina than finding FEMA actually doing what they're supposed to in North Carolina. This happens every single solitary time, and it's not mismanagement in any way whatsoever at all. You want to know what's really going on in North Carolina? Well, listen to this young lady, because she's been boots on the ground since day one, and sounds like she ain't going anywhere anytime soon. And no, it's not her. Whatever you think you know about Western North Carolina and what's going on over there, you're wrong, unless you're there. I've debated on if I even wanted to make this video because I don't really want to start a bunch of conspiracy theories or I do feel like word needs to get out about what is actually happening that news is not covering. So here's the facts. Um, I have been uh, assisting with running missions and dispatch for an operations team there for the last week. And last week I was assisting running those missions in Ash County. I've been in Swantanoa this week and we've been running 70 missions a day, getting help to these people that are not being helped right now. So when I tell you this is firsthand knowledge, this is firsthand knowledge. The death toll of 200 or 200 ish is, is what's being reported right now. That's not accurate. Um, my organization sent out 10,000 body bags to local authorities this, this week, and um, they're requesting more. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that all 10,000 of those has been used, but it does mean that they're finding a need um, and that they're thinking that they're going to need more. Um, I will tell you, you know, we've spoken to some of the funeral homes and refrigeration truck companies that have been brought in. And there's, you know, a thousand in this town, 800 in this town, 500 in this town, and we're finding more bodies every day. This is this is an ongoing process. Um, my team has cadaver dogs that have been going out. We have med teams that are going out. Um, it's not only deaths from the storm, but deaths since the storm. There's a huge need, particularly in our Hispanic communities. A lot of them are scared. There's border patrol trucks driving around and they're scared to ask for help. We've lost two Hispanic children to hypothermia in our community this week because they, they didn't know that help was out there for them and they don't know who to trust. Um, sorry. Um, so the the devastation in this area is beyond what anything that I've ever seen before. It's it's beyond what anybody that has lived it has seen before. We're, we're talking to survivors that rode their house a mile down the river. We're talking to people that sat there and told us about 40 foot walls of water looking like tsunamis coming through these towns that have never seen anything like this and they've lived there their entire lives. Elderly people are sitting here telling me that they rode their house down the river. Again, I don't want to get into conspiracy theories or uh, anything crazy, but as someone who has been there and, and been out there since basically the beginning, uh, when this first started, I've spent two weeks in various locations and it's bad. The infrastructure is gone. They're talking about months before power is restored. We're going into winter. These people have no power. Their houses are unlivable. They're covered in mold, mildew. Everything's falling apart. They're sleeping in tents. They're sleeping on their porches. I mean, their <laughs> help is, is coming, but it's it's hard when there's tens of thousands of people in these small towns that are being forgotten about. And we're, we're doing our best to help them. We have spent all week delivering heaters and propane and cook stoves and blankets and sleeping bags and hot meals and taking these people. We have shower trucks that we're taking them to, shuttling them back and forth. Um, we've been fixing people's driveways. We have large equipment crews that crews out. We have chainsaw crews out cutting trees off of people's houses, getting their roofs tarped up for them. Um, it, the community is out here and, and we are doing good things and we are helping them, but the need is so high and it will be for months and I'm I'm worried that people are gonna forget about North Carolina, especially with everything that just happened in Florida. Um, but 
this is not something that's going to stop next week and you're hearing about supply warehouses that are full, that's a good thing because these supplies are going to be needed for months and months and months and donations are going to stop coming in. So yes, we're stockpiling a little bit, um, but we're also running out of things. I mean, we have a ton of food and water. That's great. And people need that and we're passing it out and it's, it's, getting, it's going to use. But we need generators. We need diesel. We need off-road diesel. We need fuel. We need propane. We need kerosene. We need propane heaters, kerosene heaters. We need socks. We need sleeping bags. We need medications. There's there's a, a huge list of things that these people still need and they're not being donated. So um, if you're looking for a way to help out and uh, I, I can get you in touch with that. You can send it directly to us, uh, Jack Stables. We have a fund that is going directly toward uh, the relief out here. Uh, but mainly, I just I want to get information out to to the public about what's going on out here from someone who has been there firsthand on the ground, boots on the ground, and has seen it. And you're probably not going to watch this far into the video anyway, but they need help. They need our help. And I don't know why the news is not covering this in an accurate way, uh, but... And, and I don't, like I said, I don't want to get into any crazy theories or anything, but these are just the facts. You can draw your own conclusions. And if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to try to answer them for you. Like I said, we're out in Swannanoa. We're running a huge ops team out there. I've been in charge of their dispatch for all of the operations. All the leads are coming into me. I'm vetting them. I'm running a lot of recon. Um, I'm working from home for the next two days, and I'm probably going to be going back out this week um to assist them because this is something that's going to be going on for months and i plan to help them until that community is rebuilt and they no longer need me so um yeah that's your western north carolina update and if you guys can help out in any way uh thoughts prayers donations uh we have an amazon list there's a gofundme uh or you can like i said you can venmo it directly to us and we will make sure that it gets where it needs to go